Hello, everyone. Um, the other day, I was on Twitter, because I was bored, and I stumbled upon a tweet that said, um, is anybody into weird cases of serial killers? And I was like, you know what, might as well. I'm actually very interested. So um, I stumbled upon this story, and this guy, his name is John Lace Casey, and he is called the killer count. Um, he raped and killed at least 34 young men and boys. And he was um, referred to as an upstanding citizen, and no, nobody really knew if Casey was a threat or not. He thought of him as not a threat. Um, his job involved dressing as Pogo the Clown for children's birthday parties. Um, um, neighbors reported Casey leaving at odd hours of the night, lights turning on and off, and one neighbor reported hearing screams and sounds of suffering coming from the Casey home. Um, when convicted, Casey said murder had given him sexual pleasure. He hid most of his victims underneath his house in the crawl space, and he was given to be So today, I want to describe to you the methods of execution for the death penalty. Um, there's five execution methods, but today I'd like to focus on three, which are lethal injection, electrocution, and gas chamber. So to begin, um, So to begin, um, in 1977, Charles Brooks was the first person to be executed by lethal injection. Today, all 32 states that have the death penalty use this method. Lethal injection is the most commonly used for form of capital punishment. Um, the death penalty information center provided me with this information. Um, and he des they describe the steps of how they do lethal injection. So first, the condemned person is usually bound to a gurney, so like this. Um, they strap their arms and legs and even their very boring. Um, a member of the execution, execution team positions several heart monitors onto their skin, and two needles are inserted in, in through the inmate's arms. Long tubes connect the needle through a hole in the cement block, blocks to several intravenous drips. Um, the first tube is the harmless saline solution, which is sodium chloride, in water, and then at the warden signal, he he raised the curtain, exposing the enemy to his family and his friends. So basically that's how they strap the enemy. And then this is what they do. So um, then the enemy is injected with sodium thiopental, which is an anesthetic that puts the enemy to sleep. So that's the first part. Um, next um, follows the pancronium bromide, which paralyzes the entire muscle system and stops the enemy's breathing. Finally, the flow of potassium chloride stops the heart. Often the injections are um, performed by inexperienced technicians who can easily make a mistake by injecting the drugs into a muscle instead of a vein, um, which can cause the inmate great pain. So I watched this video, I was gonna add a video to the slide, but it was way too long. So in the video, it shows an inmate who obviously do all the steps and the person who was doing it missed, missed well, exactly put muscle instead of vein. And it shows the video, it's kind of gruesome. Um, the, in, the inmate is like shaking and like, it's like, it's really scary the way he was in his like, like his family was there watching through the window and they were like crying because he was like pouring, it was, it was just it was just a mess. Okay, so um, the next form of, of, of execution is electrocution. Um, New York built the electric chair in 1888 and executed William Kermler in 1980. Um, the death penalty center provides the steps for electrocution as well. First, the enemy is shaved and strapped into a chair with belts that cross his chest, joints, legs, and arms. Um, then a metal skull cape shaped electrode is attached to the scalp and forehead over a sponge, moistened with saline. So basically like that. The sponge can't be too wet or the saline short circuits the electric current. An additional electrode is moistened with electro cream and is attached to the prisoner's shaved legs. Um, the prisoner is then blindfolded, and once the warden signals, the executioner who pulls a handle to connect the power supply. A jolt between 500 and 2,000 volts electrifies the enemy, which lasts for about 30 seconds. Um, the, doc the doctors wait to see the enemy's heart is still pounding, and if it is, they continue to electrify him until he's dead. Um, during the process, the inmate has violent movements where it can result into dislocation of the limbs and fractures of the bones. The prisoner's eyeballs sometimes pop out and rest in his cheeks. Uh, the prisoner often defecates, urinates, and vomits blood and, and drool. Sometimes the inmates can easily catch on fire as well. Okay, um, 
the last method of execution is the gas chamber. In 1924, the use of cyanide gas was introduced in Nevada, and they believed that this was a, main, a more humane way of execution. Um, for this execution, the inmate is strapped to a chair in an airtight chamber. So in there, you can see that the chair is right there, so they put the inmate in there. And then after that, um, below the chair rests a pail of sulfuric acid below the legs. A long stethoscope is affixed to the inmate so that the doctor outside can pronounce the death. <laughs> Once everyone has left the chamber room, the chamber room is sealed, the warden then gives a signal to the ex executioner who flicks a lever that releases crystals of sodium cyanide into the pail. This causes a, a chemical reaction that releases hydrogen cyanide, act. cyanide gas. The prisoner is instructed to breathe deeply to speed up the process. The eyes pop, the skin turns purple, and the victim begins to drink. Okay, the inmate dies from hypoxia. It's the cutting off of oxygen to the brain. So in conclusion, I described to you the three methods of execution, which was lethal injection, electrocution, and gas chamber. I hope you found this topic as interesting as I did. Thank So, Timothy, what did you think? Uh, her simple idea was very clear, and uh, in that she was telling us different ways to administer the death penalty. Uh, I think one of the strong points of the, this her speech were that her visuals matched exactly what she was talking about, and she was, her stories and um, her thing and stuff like that was very, very descriptive and seemed to draw in, it drew, drew my interest in. Um, two ways that to improve the speech. Um, there was a lot of information in the speech, but I only heard one or two sources on my list, but it seemed like you were pulling, you were pulling different information from somewhere, but I couldn't tell where it was going. Yeah, it was just one side. Okay. And then um, you were, for the, sort of, for the sources and stuff, it made sense to look, you were looking at your notes, but uh, some of the times you were almost reading your speech from your notes. No, it was, not a lot, but enough that I noticed it. Mm -hmm. uh, and the visuals, you know, were, I like the visuals a lot. A lot. So, oral, this speech, maybe one way to improve it could be to be maybe the, if you have the time to practice it, mm -hmm. um, and then go back and watch yourself into it, because then you might have caught the, the they were looking at it. Yeah, yes. Throw it on folks. All right. <laughs> Yeah, I think we've said it a couple of times. I think you've got the mechanics down here, and now you need the, the practice and the rehearsal to make it go smoother because, look, it's topically organized. It's e that's easy to follow. You've got a visual as you go on each of those uh, points, so that's not complicated. You have some descriptions to put on the individual points and little pieces of information. I think some of that could be elaborated on and you could probably do some additional research to make it more useful and interesting. Plus you have a little bit of time that you could fill in uh, with that material. So, but like I said, the, the structural stuff is pretty solid. The visuals are integrated pretty well. But it does feel like it's a rough run through the first time. And I mean, I know what you practiced. I'm, I'm sure you practiced before. But it feels like you, like you're still practicing it. It's not. It doesn't feel like I'm getting up and giving this speech. You know, it's it's like okay, I'm putting this together in front of people instead of 
giving the speech that you've put together. You want to start off? John Wayne Gacy, he's a scary clown, isn't he? That's because he killed 33 young men and raped them and buried them in the, in the cellar of his house. Not exactly the kind of guy that you'd want living next door to you. You don't have to worry about it. The state of Illinois executed him in 1980 through lethal injection. You know, lethal injection is only one method of execution that's been used in the United States. Today, I want to share with you the three primary methods of execution that are still available in the United States. These are lethal injection, electrocution, and the use of the gas chamber. You know, you, you, you just need to kind of practice it and get it smooth, so, because you've got all of those parts there, but it just doesn't sound like you've put it all together and gone through it and, and, and thought about how you're going to say it to an audience. It, it, you're working it out in front of us instead of having it worked out before you get to us. And that's, and that's where you want to be when you get up to give your presentation. Uh, on, the, on the individual points, you've got some descriptions of points, which is fine. I like the... Um, I, I, I know what Tim's talking about. There's. You mentioned the Death Penalty Information Center. I didn't realize that's where all of your information came from. You need to be consistent about that. But there were also pieces of information that I think are missing. For example, you talked about lethal injection. You mentioned that it was uh, used by all of the states that currently have the death penalty. Does that mean that uh, no states are using electrocution and gas chamber anymore because they all use lethal injection? Or do they still have those available as options? I don't know. Uh, did all states use all three methods, or were there some states that just use electrocution, some states that just use the death, excuse me, um, the gas chamber? I don't know that. Uh, that's something that you ought to have in your speech. I did think that you, like you mentioned, the first person who got a lethal injection, that was in your example. Who was the last person to be in the gas chamber? You know, who, or who was the last person to be executed by electrocution? I don't know if they are still executing people using those methods, and if, if they aren't, then that would be just like you had the first person who was being executed by lethal injection. Let's, well, let's hear something about those other ones, too, and that I don't think would be too hard to find, and I guess, uh, my guess would be it's on the same site that you went to, because they've got all that kind of information there. People, I hear this topic, of, not, not this particular topic, but the subject being debated often in my argumentation class and I hear from the Death Penalty Information Center all the time. There's a ton of stuff yeah. there, I know. So uh, I thought the visuals that you picked were fine. Uh, like I said, they mostly just kind of remind us of what the uh, point is in the, you know, or that this is the, a different segment. We get that. There's a little bit more description of the, of the process in the first two than there is in the third one. Uh, but uh, we get a general idea about what's going on there. Some of the gruesomeness that can happen during an execution you do talk about, and that's one of those places where I think a, a story might be appropriate, where you tell a particular case, you know, in the execution of so-and-so in Florida in the electric chair, here's what happened to this particular person, and you know, he, he caught fire and his eyeballs popped across the room and all this sort of thing and the people who were watching were horrified when they saw it, you know, that sort of thing. Or uh, you mentioned, you did have an example that you used it with the, uh, the inexperienced technician who got it in the muscle and the person, you know, had problems and that sort of thing. Uh, I, I don't remember that you gave a name or a date or anything like that, but that's another place where the particular story I think would, would help a little bit. And I, I thank you for sparing us the uh, visual, the video clips. I think we could probably live without those kinds of things. Leave it to the imagination. Uh, that, that, that I thought was a wise decision on your part. And I think you have an okay exit line, but it's a little bit like the introduction. You sort of deliver it just because you have to have an exit line. You're not thinking about how am I going to try and get this across the audience? What effect do I, I want this to be dramatic. I want this to be effective. So I hope you found it as interesting as I did. You know, that kind of, I mean, just talk to people. You just kind of read the line and it, it just feels, it falls a little bit flat. So the technical stuff is good. You've got good information. The visuals are fine. I think you're, you're doing okay, but you do have to kind of complete the process of making it into a speech. All right, thank you.